Welcome back, everybody. We are Bloody Say. I'm Veronica. I'm Tilda. And we're gonna do the footwork. So footwork, four different positions. We are in a Pilates V, burden of perch, heels, and then a tendon stretch or point and flex. So I'm gonna start with uh, a Pilates V. And what happens so often in, in this one, like on Reformer, is people get way too wide on this. This is some kind of dancer thing, which is great if you need it. But really, Pilates V is the way the leg sits naturally in the hip socket. So, you know, maybe a fist width, or like you were saying on the Reformer, the toes being, you know, three finger widths apart, two finger widths apart, the knuckles of the feet, not so much the toes. You're sitting generally, to the front edge of the chair and you're in a, a neutral spine or a straight back. Now when we say straight back, we don't mean that the bones of the back are flat. We still do have those natural curves. So I'm going to have you do this with me. Sure. And I'm going to have you face that direction. Okay. Just so you can see um, that hopefully she's not doing a lot of waffling through the pelvis, that the pelvis can stay stable. There still might be a little bit of movement through it as the femur bones move in the hip joint. So we don't just do this together. Okay, so we're in our Pilates V. The heels don't change. They just stay where they are in space. We inhale, the femur goes down. We exhale, the femur rises up. The knees tend to want to be the drivers in all these exercises. But could we not let that happen? Could we maybe think the knees resist straightening, the knees resist bending, and then that puts the work more in the glute hamstring? Uh, in the, uh, all the footwork, you don't get as much extension through the hip, uh, but you do get a lot of flexion, which is opposite of the reformer where you'll get um, more extension. Uh, I do do this kind of slow, but generally it's got a little bit more of a pace to it, yes. right? So it would be yeah. inhale, exhale, or inhale for two, exhale for two. Uh, you can grab the, the edges of the chair. You can press your palms together, bring your hands behind your head. Yeah. And you would do 10. Yeah. The only thing I wanted to add to that, which yeah. you already said, um, was where are you going to sit on the chair? Mm -hmm. You sit near the front of the chair, and this is a big mistake a lot of people do. They just kind of just sit and put their feet down. Mm -hmm. Now, the reason you want to sit closer to the front of the chair is so that you feel like you're actually sitting on top of the spring right. rather than behind the spring. Yes, it pushes that you back. almost feels like it pushes you back. Exactly. So placement of the torso is um, really important. And to the only other thing, well, we talked about breath, mm -hmm. but maybe a little bit. I think it's important to know Veronica's going to do a whole uh, piece on breath that you all should watch. Uh, but when the spring opens, the breath kind of starts to pull up into your lungs. So you want to feel like an opposition happening. Right. You want to actually feel that as the spring opens and she inhales, there's actually a decompression of the spine that happens. So anyone that you see that actually sits flat and all of the work yeah. happens down there, you know that the springs are giving back to Veronica. And it's not a full exercise then. No, it's, right? it's not, not a full body yeah. exercise. Yeah. And I like what you said yeah. about getting over the spring because right. it kind of is like, like these little rocket blasters that help to decompress yes. and suspend your spine up out of yeah. your pelvis. Which doesn't happen if you sit exactly behind that. Exactly. Uh, I think we already said no movement of the feet. The, yeah. the, the feet are your foundation. They remain stable and the legs draw in as the pedal goes down. So there's your other opposition, right? Right. Your bones draw in and rotate as the paddle lowers down. Right. So this way. Uh, so what I will do sometimes yeah. is uh, if I do a hands-on, all I will do, if you just stay right there. Do you want to do it with bird and perch feet? Sure. Yeah. Okay. So, we'll do this. Idea. Yeah. so we're bird and perch. And then uh, I know what she's going to do. You go yeah. <laughs> right, so she, here she is. Bird on her perch, same as the reformer. Right? Metatarsals coming over, heels dropping under, flexion through the ankle joint. So in order to know, because people tend to make the paddle moving down the most important mm -hmm. part of the exercise. And it's not. Right? Decompression of the spine. Right. Strengthening of the hips. All of yeah. that is, a, is, is more important than the paddle moving. So... You kind of resist the paddle going down. So all I will do is I will take my hands on to the knees and then the femur bone. And as the paddle goes down, I'll gently push your femur bones back to her. 
so that energetically she feels that the femur bones aren't trying to fold out into the paddle. Yeah. They're actually pulling back into the hip joint to actually help suspend the spine. Totally. Right? And then try to maintain that, that bird on a perch position throughout. Right. Obviously, as the paddle comes up, it's going to become more challenging yep. to get your area reflection. So if you don't, if you're doing a group class and you don't have a one-on-one, -on -one, because this is great one-on-one, -on -one, tactile yeah, yeah, always yeah, yeah. great. So if you can get someone in the studio to do this with you, go for it. But you can, the only way you can do it yourself is to resist the Absolutely. straightening of the knees. Like they're like kind of like the last person <laughs> to yeah. assist in this um, exercise. And then of course that would be true for heels. heels. You're on the very, very edge of your calcaneus, the edge of your heel. Your feet are hopefully so flexed up, and not just the toes again, just like we talked about on the reformer, yeah. um, but really trying to build some shin strength. Uh, and then, of course, you're getting just different fibers of your hamstrings, your calves are getting a little bit more stretch, and your anterior tibialis is getting a little bit more uh, tension as well. Uh, arms, sometimes it's nice to like pull those arms into the back of the sockets to assist in that decompression. And like you were saying, the equipment doesn't care if it's moved. You need to expand you yeah. to expand the equipment. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna do 10 of these. Yeah, um, so arm position we kind of talked yeah. about. I just want to throw this out there because I've been noticing it a little bit. It's a, a good share. Um, when we take, I've seen uh, recently people grabbing the front of the chair. Yeah. Totally fine. So there's a couple of things that um, I've seen queued out there, I've seen people do. Mm -hmm. So. One is when you take the front of the chair and you pull the chair up mm -hmm. to create shoulder girdle stability, totally fine. However, it actually um, can, if your arms are so it's big, shorter, like shorter arms which would be fine, it way. pulls you down and it doesn't allow for that the expansion. Parachute expansion. Yeah. So it's kind of like yeah. you're putting armor on and you're not allowing then your lungs and so, your breath to Hold it glad you said that yeah. because no body's in front of us. Um, I have seen that, yeah. and I'll get them in that case. They are not allowed to, they punch down yeah. to help assist in that lift and to get the breath up under their collar bars. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, totally. So that was it. Um, last one? Wait, yeah, like, I think so. Yeah. And then the last one uh, knees are somewhat in line with hip joint. Again, you can have your arms here, here, whatever helps to give you that suspension so breath is more available. And then you're flexing and pointing. Just keeping this still and just moving the foot. So it's kind of a brain drain for people to get very. No, it's hard to use. It's a coordination yeah. thing too, right? So she can put her hands onto her legs. I love that. So one. that. Yeah. So as you push the pedal down, you can almost feel like your femur bone is pushing up into your hand without actually moving. Right. Your hand, but you can feel. Feel it. Yeah. That it, it yeah. Yeah. Because people want to push it away. Yeah. But actually, that press does give you a little bit of that booty. Yeah. Um, strength yeah. and tone and then the last one would be paddle still yeah this is and then yeah we're lowering the heels towards the springs and lifting it back yeah. up so this is just a little bit more or building brain cells yeah a little coordination and you would do 10 of each can i have one more time? oh one more yeah <laughs> just always one more thing <laughs> oh, one more thing i'm gonna just turn you yeah up. absolutely tendency okay so have a sit and do whatever foot position that you want okay what a few people will do a tendency is actually to take the body and shift it forward to do the footwork because your body weight will actually help push the paddle down. Okay, so that's the hard part. So in your mind's eye or, or I guess when you're doing the work, you can almost imagine that when the paddle goes down, you're actually trying to breathe and keep your ribs moving back and spin slightly. Just your rib cage, not your whole pelvis. Mm -hmm. So they are almost opposing the springs by going back and up. The other thing is if you are a tucker, people will sit back in their low back and be yeah. careful for this. So this is when taking the front of the paddle and pulling your lumbar up into its natural curve is very helpful as well. And you can actually put your hand on people's lumbar spine so that when the paddle goes down, you can ask them to just gently pick their low back up and off of your fingers, right? And that's very helpful as well. And uh, the orthotic people will just kind of hinge more at the hip joint, which is so yeah. they'll kind of sit there and they'll hyperextend the rib cage. So allowing T12, the top of your oh. own, so as to kind of, yeah, pull things back in space with your breath. 
Yep. Yeah, I think for sure. Just looking for, and then at the end you were to jump. I'm going to do it to you now. Yeah, that to yeah. Jump, which I think is So great. I end up doing this a lot with my clients because they don't understand. If, and the spring might be too heavy. If it's too heavy, then you're just going to have to lower the spring. But I give them the feedback on my back, and then I ask them to only move their femurs as much as they can breathe into me, as if they could give me their air. I can feel it. I don't need a mirror. I don't need to see her. I can feel that she's not allowing her pelvis to come away from me. So that's just really nice. Yeah, because the tech counts for it. Yeah, yeah. So those are some thoughts and perspectives and ideas to play with. So please play with it in your studio. Ask some questions if anything was confusing. Put it in the comment box below. And thanks for joining us. Um, we'll see you on our next video. Thanks.